Creo que ya estamos live. Sí. Veamos. Veamos en el chat. Sí. Ahí veo que estamos live. Muchas gracias a todos por, por venir de nuevo. Eh, tenemos un nuevo día en nuestra serie de, de Mobile App Redesign for Developers. Ahí veo a Lester en el chat. Hey Lester, ¿cómo estás? Uh, ¿Verdad? Esta serie en inglés, so let me introduce myself in English. <laughs> Thank you everyone for coming and for staying with us in our series. Uh, we really appreciate you guys for taking your time on the Friday and always sticking with us. Uh, we're really happy to see you. As you can see, today I have an, a new co-host. Um, yeah. Angel couldn't make it today. We have Randy here. <laughs> Say hi, Randy. Hi, hi everyone. Uh, welcome to the NetDO. Uh, today we are continuing the series about mobile app redesign for developers. Uh, we will actually cover a very interesting topic, which is colors and typography. Sometimes it's pretty tricky to select them, depending on the app. And even though it's a very small details in the app, it can make a huge difference. Uh, so, oh, now I will leave you with Luis, uh, who will actually give you some really good tips uh, when dealing with this stuff. Yep. Oh, thank you for that introduction, Randy. <laughs> and as Randy said, today we're going to be looking at uh, colors and typography. Let me change the the scene here so I can present my screen. Let's see. Let's go here. Okay. So there I should now have our workstation here. So guys, can you confirm me in the chat if everything is looking fine? How is the audio? How is the video? I know that uh, last week we had some we had some technical issues with um, some technical difficulties, you know, with the with the camera video. Let me know if you can see me moving well. <laughs> uh, let me know if the screen is lagging. How's the resolution? Let's see what Ricardo and Lester say. Audio and video are good. Great. So, so far, no problem today. <laughs> we're lucky, we're lucky. <laughs> okay, so uh, let me first start with, let me get the blog. Let's put this over here. So today I got to publish uh, the new blog, which we're gonna be using as a guide for today's session. Um, about colors and typography. So today, the whole day, uh, our focus will be on learning a, a few tips and tricks about uh, handling color in our, in our mobile apps. And also, how can we use typography and, and give character to our app with the typography we choose? Huh? So here you can see in the blog, uh, first we're gonna be seeing color then we're going to be seeing some tips and tricks we can do around color uh, to to make it easier for us in our in our app to pick a color uh, create a, a palette and how can we choose colors that are like in sync with each other and make sense when we're using it in the app there's a, a really neat trick you can you can do there by using the guidelines of your preferred uh, basal language. In our case, we're going to use material design. They have a really good documentation in, in terms of uh, everything you can do with colors. Then we're going to be seeing some really cool tools and resources we can use. Uh, we can leverage basically to to work and play around with our palettes and and find different colors. Like we don't need to come up with the colors. <laughs> You, you don't need to worry, like you're, you're going to have to become a, an expert in color theory. There's a lot of resources out there that can help us achieve this. So we're going to be looking into material palettes. We're going to also be looking into 
uh, more generic color palettes that are created by community members and designers and we can actually use them in our apps once we know the fundamentals of how material design handle colors uh, there's also really cool sites that we can use um, to play around with color wheels, extract color from like an image so i'm gonna show you how we can do all of that uh, we are also gonna talk a little bit about gradients because who doesn't love gradients right <laughs> um, there's a video uh, a really cool website i use for gradients and uh, if you notice all my blog posts my banners uh, i always prefer to put a gradient in the background uh, with a color that really attracts me and this is the site I used to like get an inspiration on which banner I should pick uh, So the first thing I pick when I'm gonna do like a new art for my blog is first I go and find a gradient I like and then I start adding stuff on top of it <laughs> uh, Then we're gonna be seeing typography uh, Basically, what is typography? How can we how can we work with it? What are the, the, the main characteristics we, we should have in mind when we're searching for a typography uh, for our font uh, to use in our project? Like what is, what is, uh, what is the letter spacing? What is line height? We, we know we have those properties available in summary forms to modify that in our, in our text views, but what really does it affect? How does it really affect uh, the text uh, so I, I want to talk a bit about that as well then I have a few tips and tricks I I always keep in mind when when working with text in, in, me, in my app like uh, minimum I will not try and put something below 12 as a size for a font depending on the on the weight it has uh, there's other, some other tips here, but we are going to see that when we get to that. And there's also some cool websites we can use. And there's actually an app I remembered. Um, our friend Kim Phillips from the Summering community, he was using. And I'm going to give you the name of it so you can also download it. Where is it? I'm trying to find it here on my phone. It's a really, yeah, it's a really cool app. I have it here. I'll show you that uh, as well. But before we get started with, uh, with today's topic, uh, going back to what we had um, assigned for last week, I hope everyone got to download Adobe XD uh, and Sketch. Uh, confirm me in the chat if you have that, because on this session, we're going to be playing a, a little bit more uh, around in Adobe XD with the colors and and, do, and starting to do like uh, the sessions for the new features so we're gonna add over here like the about us canvas the star tracker and uh, a favorite uh, favorite repository here as well so we're gonna create like three new lines and we will create like the basic uh, layout and play around with the colors there uh, we're not going to complete all the designs today. We're just going to lay out like the, the basis so we can uh, continue working on them throughout the, the rest of the sessions. So before getting started with this, okay, I see in the chat. Yeah, Ricardo says he, he got a double C. Uh, did you also get to, the, to download the, the project for Git Trends? Let me send you the link. So you can download the the Git Trends project and and open it in your Adobe XD. Let me show you here. So to download the, the Adobe XD project, you are gonna come to the Git Trends repo. Let me put this in the chat. Git Trends repo. Okay, and there it is in the chat. And once you're in the Git Trends repo, you're coming to the artwork directory and you are going to select, let me zoom this in so you can read it. Let's see. Okay, so you're gonna download the third file from the artwork directory, which is called gittrend.xd. Click on that. 
press download and that should get you the project file once you press on it you should see the same the same project I'm seeing here with all the colors and assets I'll give you like one or two minutes so you guys can catch up and download it remember always have a little water break so <laughs> Let me also start looking for Let's start looking for the Behance project Oh nice <laughs> Nice <laughs> <laughs> Oh, now I'm nervous. <laughs> no, no, I, I'm glad everyone is excited to learn more about this. Uh, it's a really, a really cool topic and something that actually makes a, you feel like it makes a difference once you learn how to, how to work at least the basic around it. So if you guys remember last week, I gave you like a little spoiler of this uh, Behance project, which has like the final uh, polished design that was implemented on the trends so today uh, I, well yeah, last last week I said this was the first thing we, we were gonna see and I will walk you around through the designs so you can get a better understanding of of how the end product uh, looks after you're gonna complete the five weeks right so let me open here Let me see the screen to see it if it's okay there. Yeah, I think it looks good. Switch. Let's see. Nice. <laughs> uh, I see in the chat that Ricardo says Adobe XD with the trans project ready. Nice. Oh, I see. Yeah, I see Faisa's message of that she's really excited. We're glad to have you, Faisa. <laughs> So continuing with this, um, here, uh, this project you're seeing here is basically once I completed all the designs, I wanted to have a way in which we could like show easily to uh, anyone without having to go to the, to the Adobe XD uh, project, uh, like a full overview of how the app looks and what features it has and what are all the pages, uh, like what, are, what do all the pages look like, right? So I went a little bit an extra mile. <laughs> you don't have to do this, uh, but it's centrally a, a nice way on how to present your, your finished uh, UI proposal. Let me see, maybe put it in like this. Yeah, uh, let's see, okay. So basically uh, uh, this has a full walkthrough. Uh, as you can see here, here, uh, like a brief summary of the main screens and features we have in, in Git Trends. The first thing you're going to notice after that is that we did a logo rebranding. Before, the Git Trends logo used to look like, used to have these colors. And this is going to be important. So I pay close attention to the colors Git Trends used to have. You see it, it was all like uh, blue and it had like it had like different shades of, of blue and there's not uh, there's not uh, a lot of like contrast on, on the colors at least on this two here you see that it's almost the same shade right so also you can see the logo here it was like a really light blue and it had this uh, this uh, the trend line, it was like a, a dark color, I think navy or black. So we went from this color, uh, we changed to the teal color. Um, this color preference was not decided on anything philosophical, as I told you guys, because um, when we're dealing with colors, each color actually means something. So like if you pick something red, it means like a, 
like it's a call to act like uh, red gives the sense to the user like uh, of being active so that's why you you see like they use it a lot in in food chains and, and restaurants um, and each color has their own own meaning like uh, I know blue gives the sense of like peace and calm and orange also is is used like to give feeling of warmth so you can actually pick your colors depending on on what you want like the, the user to feel when they're using your app in this case um i really like teal <laughs> i'm totally honest my decision to pick this color was completely out of my preference but it also went well once i uh, researched a bit that this color also goes well with like this type of project which is like a more um tech like project and it's like uh, more productivity oriented right so it worked out in the end <laughs> So that's why we have teal and we also created uh, a dark variation of the logo because we wanted to have dark team. So we wanted to have this UI not only work and like with this light background, but we wanted also users to have the ability to use it in dark settings and not, and not uh, hurt their eyes that much, right? Uh, let's see. So after that, uh, we also have on um, Trends this onboarding experience for the user. And we have, we have four pages uh, outlining the, ma the main features we have available in Trends. So this is basically a guide for them to know how to use and what they can do inside of the app before even starting the app. If you see the first initial proposal, we did not have any onboarding experience but we did want to give the user this uh, this little uh, guide, right? So he could get familiar with the app and, and figure stuff out. So that was one of the proposals of the new features proposals. And here you can see in the project where you can find it. You zoom out the project. Remember to zoom out the Adobe XD project, hold the Alt key and use the, the scroll the scroll wheel on your mouse and that way you can zoom in, zoom in and zoom out so I, I tend to use this a lot because if I want to go to a different part of my project if you notice the zoom is in reference to your mouse so you can zoom out put your mouse to wherever you want to go in the file you see I want to put it like here where the colors are then you start zooming in and the zoom is going to go towards your mouse so that's a, a, a pretty neat trick to, to know when you're working around with XD. So you're gonna find the onboarding here is the, the second to last in the, in the project. And here you can see, well, let me put the other one because we have like the hip here and everything. So the first onboarding page we have is like a, the welcome to get trends. And if you see, uh, instead of putting like bullet points, we try to put like uh, icons that made reference to what we were talking about to make to make it easier for the user to understand what we were trying to make reference to, right? He didn't have to read the whole thing. He already knew that, okay, maybe this has to do with GitHub. Yeah, maybe some charts or something I'm gonna see. Yeah, so the next one was gonna be about, we wanted to give him an overview of what he was gonna be able to do in terms of looking at the trends of his repo so there we outlined that he's going to have a chart where he can see all this different type of of stats uh, we also gave him the ability to enable notifications right away before even uh, logging in the app before we will show like a dialogue like a pop-up inside the app as soon as he logged in uh, we didn't feel that was uh, kind of a, a good experience for the user because it, it felt like intrusive. So here we just make a, a suggestion and we try to like highlight the option so he's like attracted to to enable it, right? Because if you're installing the this app, probably you want to get your uh, your trends, right? You want to stay on top of them, so it's 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 almost for sure that you want also notifications so yeah we put it as the first actionable item you can do in the app 
here. And then lastly, it's gonna be a short description on how you can connect uh, to the app and, and what can you use. So basically, obviously, uh, this is Git Trends. So <laughs> what you're gonna use to connect is your GitHub account. So here we also make it easy and um, we, we give him a button right away to connect to GitHub. And if he presses the button, he's gonna get the, um, the sign, the authentication flow for GitHub. Once that's completed, he will be taken directly to his repository page and he's gonna be logged, uh, his repos repository list and he's gonna be logged in. So remember, we have this onboarding, but onboarding, uh, you, you have two options. You can either always show them uh, when he kills and opens the app. So remember, uh, if you background the app, it's not really closed, like it's not killed. So if he opens it again, he's gonna restore where he left off. But if he closes completely the app, the or Android kills the session, it's basically a, a fresh uh, session, right? So you have two options. Some some apps some uh, always like to show the onboarding uh, to the user each time they do a fresh a fresh start of the app, and but. Others prefer just to show it the first time and once the user has gone through the experience, uh, you can keep like a setting inside your app and, and be like, okay, was this the first launch of this app and this device? Yes. So if it's the first launch, show the onboarding. Once if not, once the first launch is done, once he completes the onboarding and he opens again the app, uh, like a fresh uh, session, don't show the onboarding because we already uh, met our objective with it and we don't want to bore the user with the same information over and over, right? So that's what we're doing in Git Trends. Once the user completes his onboarding experience, uh, he's, he either clicks try demo or connect to GitHub. Try demo will log him in, uh, will take him inside the app, but in the demo mode. So remember in Git Trends, we have a demo mode. So it will take him inside the app with this information, obviously with the new design, but it's gonna take him in with a demo, demo information so he can try the app out. So we're not, we didn't also want to bound him to uh, authenticate and give his information to be able to use the app. And also Apple gave us some trouble there because when, when you try, when we wanted to release the app to Apple, uh, at first, uh, I know Brandon told me he didn't have the demo mode and he had only the sign-in option. And Apple kept rejecting the app because they were like, I need to be able to test this application without having to sign into an account. Because maybe their testers didn't want to authenticate with their GitHub or anything. So they needed that demo experience. So that gave us a, a better push on enabling that. So after that, uh, we have the welcome page. Uh, remember I said the onboarding is only on first launch, right? So what are we gonna show on, on fresh launch when we don't have the onboarding? So because we no longer wanted to take the user directly to the setting page, how we used to do, right? Remember, um, on beta version, as soon as you open the app, you will be taken to this settings page here. So that also confused the user in terms of, you felt like, uh, how am I even inside the app if I haven't even logged in, like authenticated with my GitHub account, like why am I in the settings page, right? So that's why we decided to make a welcome page. And basically this is our welcome page. It's a, try to make it as friendly and simple as possible. So it's pretty simple. We just have the welcome to Git Trends title here. And then we have, okay, you can, with this app, you can monitor your ripples. We put a little image here. If you notice the image, it's a vector. Uh, if you remember from last session, uh, we were talking about uh, what vector Rs and, and how can we use it in our projects, right? So since this is a vector, we could easily 
add inside of it our git trends logo and it looks like we created the whole art but no we just uh, there's some cool sites uh, you can use to get some vector graphics so we customize the vector graphic and add the logo and you see how how nice it looks then we added here the connect to github uh, button and the try demo on the bottom and the version of the app so that's uh, what you get after your first launch in git trends then we have our repository page this one we saw last session uh, this became so this came all the way from from this design now this is what we have in the in the git trends app after that we worked on the trends page and this is how the trends page looks now you have four cards for each stat and basically each row so this is a, a grid here we have two rows and two columns each row is uh, a separate stat so the first row we have views and unique views and the second row we have clones and unique clones and if you tap on the cards you can enable and disable any of those stats in the graph and the color will go away and also the view will like gray out here so that's another uh, neat feature we added on the the 1.0 version before you couldn't like disable um, stats from the from the ui and we also added that and the card also grays out and it, here uh, this is how the dark team looks for that page and how did it look before So this used to be our trends page and this is how it looks now. Let me know if you have any questions about uh, any of the components you're seeing, any of the colors. I'm going to go into how we did the colors for each uh, screen and everything in a, in a few minutes after I finish showing you the, the designs. So. Let's get the designs out of the way and then we go straight into the color topic. Uh, after that, we have the referring sites page. Um, so the referring sites, remember I told you, are the sites that are, have a reference to your repository. So basically a link that goes directly to your repository. This is how it used to look. And now it looks like this. We basically kept, if you, if you notice, it's basically almost the same design, but we added some, some basic fundamentals of what I was talking to you about, uh, about you guys uh, last session about spacing and, and giving room to breathe to the, to the components, right? So basically, instead of having everything equally spaced, we decided to put a bar separating this these two elements because they are related but we also made sure to give some spacing between the the text and and the bar right um about let me see how much it is it has to be remember our magic numbers so yeah it has to be either 4 8 16 or 12 right and there you can see if i zoom in here we have 8.5 <laughs> so it's not completely exact but this is just because uh, Adobe XD right I was trying to work around with it and play around so when I actually put it in the code yeah I put 8 here and it looks uh, balanced in each side and then you see that the text under the title we center it just as it was here and then we for this we gave we changed the caps on the title of the site so you see all the titles of the of the sections right of the information we put all in caps and in white and 
the values of, of each section we put in a different color that has to do with the, the color palette we created for Git Trends. And this is like a light, uh, well, let me go to the other side. So, so this is like a, a, a brown color, light brown color. And that's what we use as our primary text color. And then the five icon for the site, we also kept here, but we made sure to only give, to give the sense that they're related, right? Because here, if you notice here, the spacing between the five icon and this section here is too big. So it looks like the five icon is like, like a abandoned here, right? <laughs> and the text is like on its own side. So that's why now everything like looks like more related and like together, right? Because we keep the five icon and the side together. And then the stats, we keep separate in the other side and we give this space here in the middle. So it feels like it's breathing, right? And we have also a car as a container for all of this before we didn't have any cards. So we added that card and it gives like the feeling of each uh, item being separate, right? And I'm almost sure that the spacing here is 16, yeah. Remember I said increments of four for our magic numbers? Well, my magic numbers. <laughs> uh, so here you can see I gave 16 from the top 16 from the left, from the bottom, I have 24. And from here, from the five icon to the title, I have 24. And this, the, the text, uh, the value of the site, right? It's aligned with this one. So it has 24 for, from the five icon as well. And it has two from the site, but I think in the app I put like four. Um, so yeah, that's how we got we got the referring sites uh, redesigned here. Taking, uh, making sure to take uh, to take care of the spacing and just if you notice the only difference we have from this and this is basically is is a major part just done by is, is spacing it correctly and making using the space to our advantage once we because even before i added the cards once i added the spacings it already looked good like this already looked good uh with this layout here and then the card and the colors just gave him uh, uh, that feeling of like popping out right uh after the referring sites we have empty states so before on uh, the first release, we ha we didn't have any empty states in the app. So if any of this data was uh, did not uh, for some reason did not come and the list was empty, uh, this will be a, a blue screen, and only we will have the title here, and the graph as well will be empty, and all of this will be in zero, and here as well we will have an empty screen. So we also wanted to give empty states to the user. So that's why we went ahead. And this was the last thing we did for our redesign. So one of the recommendations we always give, uh, we give is, okay, first redesign all the screens you have and all the features you have, and then start brainstorming on new stuff. So having empty states is good and important, but don't put it on top of priorities of working like on the repository list if the repository list is not done, right? So this is the empty state for the repositories page. We use vectors again, uh, as I told you. I'm gonna show you the cool plugin we're using for that. It's called Undrawn, and you can install it in Actavx D. Here it is, Undrawn. Let me see if I can open it. Yeah, on draw. Let me put it on the chat so you can also install that in your in your Adobe Z plugin. On draw plugin. Yeah. 
there you go. And Ondra is basically a big collection of uh, yeah, a big collection of illustrations and, that you can use in your Adobe XD projects, and they're all vectorized. You can change the colors, like if you see here. I can literally pick, uh, let me see, can I, okay, let me pick any of these, okay, once I click it, it puts it in my clipboard, I can come here, I do control B, paste it, if you're in Mac, command B, once I have it, I can double click I can come here. Let me put this here. So I can go, and since this is a vector, right? I can go and change the color to whatever color I want. So I can come here. And let's say I want this to be yellow. And I can literally change all the colors. And I believe it also creates a color for it. So let me see. Yeah. This is something uh, we're going to look into more uh, in a moment. But look how cool this is. Let me update this. Edit. Yeah, edit. And if you can see, it all, like the, everything that was purple changes at the same time. Because we, we also have the ability in Adobe XD to have like our our colors uh, defined in a specific session. And if you assign something to that color you define, uh, imagine us like we're doing in the summering, summering app, right? We have like a, uh, our styles and we assign that style to something. So this is basically the same concept. You have a vector, you assign that color that color that you define here and if you change the color all the vectors and all the components that have that are using that color are going to be updated as well so that's <laughs> so that's going to be really good for for us working with our color palette because i literally just define as you see here my palette here i use it throughout all my designs and if i want to try another palette i can just update my colors here and all my designs update <laughs> Please do it again, but that's slow. Yeah, don't worry. Uh, you'll see this when when I start doing the the when I start talking about the color the color topic. But yeah, this is gonna be really cool. You'll see. <laughs> so let's uh, finish with the rest of the designs. <laughs> yeah, I see. Amazing. Please do it. Again. <laughs> yeah, don't worry. We'll come back to that. So. Then we have the referring sites, empty state. Uh, I picked, uh, so we put referring sites list as empty. So we kept our empty states pretty basic. No animations, no nothing. You can make them way more complex, like put an animation here, put a button or something, like report an error or something, right? But for initial empty states, I this is perfect for me so don't overkill it remember you're just starting you're you're a simple yellow developer uh this looks perfect and really attractive so just put a message pick a new uh, a nice infographic here and that's it you're good to go for the chart uh the, the trends page we basically what we do is we hide the graph right the chart because the chart is empty um, and we put this uh, vector here. You see, it's like a girl with with a a graph, a chart here, and also we repeat the same thing: a title over here, no insights yet, and that's it. And since we did like the same empty state view, right? You can even uh, reuse that and just create a custom view that is called like empty state define a label here and a, a vector on the bottom, right? And that's it. 
you can use the same one in all your samples replace the text stream replace the the source for the image and you're good to go no need to create three separate uh empty states <laughs> so that's also good to keep in mind where you're designing make sure because you already know how how you call your 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 project right so also design having in mind how can i uh, re uh, reuse the the assets I'm gonna be generating, right? And the layouts I'm gonna be generating, because if you're if you redesign a whole app and you actually create, you used to have like let's say four four pages with let's say around ten to fifty views in each of them, and you redesign it and now you go to like 20, 30 views in each. Uh, and maybe most of the views are repeated in, in, in a couple of those pages. Uh, you can start seeing the, the issue there, right? You're like generating more work for you that you could avoid by thinking of that at the same time, right? And that's why we're, you, you're doing the project in Adobe C at the first time, at, in the first instance, right? So after entry states, uh, we outline also the components uh, we created while while we designing the app, right? Remember what I just said. Always think on what can you reuse after you have uh, well, well, what you can reuse when you're doing the design, right? So after I I did a few of the screens, I noticed, huh? Wait, so I'm doing a lot of cards and. For example, in this page here in the trends page, I know that this card, I want to use it four times. So I know I can just create one and reuse it, right? So this is a component, a custom component I'm going to create. So I already know that I can just take it out and put it here in my component sections. And when I'm ready to go and code my design, I can just come to this place and I can say, okay, the first thing I'll do is I know I had to create all these uh, item layouts, right? Uh, for those sections, uh, I know I have in those pages, I can just create all my item layouts. And after that, once I'm starting to redesign the pages, I can just use them. So I like to first do these and then just call them in my SAML and see them working, right? So yeah, I first worked on that. So you, while well, you do redesign, yeah, identify your components. So we had this amount of components. They're not much because remember, it's only like, it used to be only like four pages and we try to keep it simple to save work for us at the time we're implementing, right? <laughs> so this, comp yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Definitely. <laughs> yeah, and it's it, it saves you time because you know when when if you're doing it like cold first and you you're not like you're just imagining it imagining it while you're doing it, right? So there's a lot of stuff like you do and then you're going to have like three different views of the same card with different ideas you had. But you could have saved all your time by doing this first and just going with the final card. And here you can modify it easier than like having to code it and do it, right? So yeah, it, it's a... Yeah. Yeah, because from here, you can already have like all the, all the spacing you have between the elements. You know uh, how much padding you're gonna put, how much margin what is the size of the text you don't need to be changing the size of the text like 10 times to see how it looks on the screen so yeah yeah i really like uh <laughs> this discovery i had here <laughs> and now I, this is what i always do so i everyone take note of this and do it like this please you're gonna save a lot of time <laughs> uh, then we also have here the buttons remember on the welcome page i had the connect to github and also on the onboarding so I already know, why am I gonna make the same button twice? Just make it once, create a custom, and you use it on both pages. Enable notifications button, 
the skip button, the try demo. And this is all also good because you already know how they look. So the skip one, I wanted it all caps and I wanted it a different weight. So I already define everything, how it has to go. And when I come here, I know how to set it up. And also I had here the onboarding uh, indicators. And I'm also gonna show you how to work with that and how to make them look good with your colors. Um, let's see. So after that, we also have the icons, but the icons we're gonna talk about in the next session. And then we have the definition of the colors and typography we use for the design. And I believe that's the last thing. And this is today's topic, right? This is uh, what we came for today. <laughs> so don't get scared. <laughs> don't get uh, shocked by all the colors we have here. Um, but this is basically all the colors we use for the Git Trends app. Um, we have two primary colors for components. We have an, <laughs> I see Ricardo already with his, with his hands in his head. <laughs> don't worry, don't worry. It's gonna make sense once I start explaining it. <laughs> uh, so we have two primary colors here. Um, so the, the first one is the teal one, right? And then I have like a darker version for the teal one, which I use for the status bar. And we have the accent color for the app. And then we also have a primary color for our text. And then I have four optional. So the, this is the minimum I recommend to have as colors for your app. You should have a primary a darker version of that primary to use on your status bar. You should have an accent color and you should have a primary text color. This extra accent colors I have here, we started adding uh, because we saw that we wanted to have like different stats, right? And we, want to, we wanted to highlight each stat differently, right? So that's why I searched for four more accent colors that went well with this palette. So we can do that. Uh, also, we also have the colors here defined for our background. Remember the light team, the background is white. And we also have the color defined for our card surfaces. So it's also white for card surfaces. And we also have the color defined for our text, uh, like the general text. So uh, let's say a, a description or so, uh, a long body of text, right? This primary text is the only used for titles, subtitles, and headings. And then we also created a little palette for our graph. So the, the colors of our graph are totally different from our app palette because we wanted the graph to stand out and have its own like uh, uh, spotlight, right? So let's talk about colors. Why do we have so many colors? What is the... What is the idea behind primary accent? What is this, right? So if we go to my blog, mobile app redesign for developers. And we recall, if we recall to the last session, we have about defining a workflow and our toolkit. You guys can remember, I talked about choosing a Bissell language, right? And that Bissell language, most of the time, have really good guidelines uh, and recommendation in terms of design. And the one I said we, cho we chose for Git Trends is Material Design, right? So Material Design has a really cool cheat in terms of making it easier for us to implement color. Like it, it, makes, it, it makes total sense once, once you understand what it is. Um, and material designs, material design basically what they believe in uh, how your color should be is that you should have, as you see here, So for them to for for them for them for a UI to look 
harmonious and, and accessible and, and really clean and modern, they say, they believe that it should have at least two colors, right? And the primary color, and this colors they call primary and a secondary color. So the primary color is the color you use for like your, your main surfaces, like your app bar, your status bar, uh, if you have, let's see if they have some examples here. So if you see here, you see? So their primary color is gonna be like for all the main surfaces, right? So the bars, uh, the, the status bar here, if you open the menu as well, the background of the menu is gonna be on this color. And then they use a secondary color which is let's see secondary color yeah in this part they call it secondary uh but it's also called accent so the secondary color they use to highlight important things in the ui so if you see in this example here they have the primary right they have the primary dark and that's why you see this this purple goes here for the main bar this one which is a darker tone goes for the status bar and the accent color or the secondary color they use for buttons for or actions inside the app and this allows the user to easily know what are the components he can click or he can tap and execute an action with right do something inside the app with that component so it, it, it orientates uh, your user uh, at a glance really easy and it keeps everything coherent between your UI. If you even see the, the graphs, the graphs are not, uh, there's not a strict rule that you have to go with the primary dark color, but here they just decided, oh, let me just go with the primary. You could also use the accent or some variation of shade of the accent for the graphs as well, if you want to really highlight the graphs. Mm, let me show you another example. If you notice here, they do the same colors and the only thing that changes is the accent color. So what is the, what is the trick here? What makes it kind of complex to pick your two colors? Well, the two colors you pick something they also recommend is that they have enough contrast between them, right? Because remember, we don't only want to make our UI look good, but we also want it to be accessible for other people, right? So, you know, there's people that are colorblind that can maybe not see the same, uh, like not see all the colors, but how you can ma uh, make it easier for them to work with your UI is by providing two colors that have high contrast. So how can you know if two colors have high contrast? An easy, an easy way to know is just by like the tone of them, right? You right away, you notice that the purple has like a really darker tone in compared to this, uh, to this teal here, right? But an even easier way is to use the material palette. So material design has defined their own like colors. Uh, well, it's not their own colors, their own shades of colors that they use in their as guidelines, right? So let me go all the way to the bottom. And here you can see like all the color palettes they have available. They have every color and they have different variations of the same color. And now you may be like kind of confused, like why does it have so many numbers here in the left? And then it has like the hex values here. Well, that's even to help you even more, right? So remember I said you have to have a primary color, an accent color, and a primary dark color, right? Those are your three main colors for your app. If we go back here and we go to get trends, we see that we have our primary color which is this teal we have our primary dark color and we have our, our accent color which is this 
orange color here, right? Perfect. So how do I pick uh, the accent color? And I know it has enough contrast with the color I picked as primary. So this uh, numbers here on the left, let me know if you can see that right uh, well, or you need me to zoom in a little bit more. There, I think, yeah, I think there you could see it better. So, okay, for primary, they recommend to use the, the variation 500. So when you're picking a primary color, go to whatever color you like, could be red, blue, pink, and pick the 500 shade. So you're gonna pick this tone for your primary, right? So I want teal, and I come here, I go to my Adobe XD, and if you see here, remember how I told you this project, you can see also as like a, like a timeline of how I was learning and how I was discovering stuff. So in the project, you're going to see there's like two sections of colors, right? <laughs> this one that is really reduced. And then this one is like full blown, like, wow, so many colors. <laughs> so this is when I first learned, uh, I was figuring out what a primary color was, an accent color. So uh, what I started to do was little boxes here and started to pick my colors. And eventually you have like your basic palette, right? So to create this, just on the left side here in the toolbar, select a square, create a little square here, any size you like. Come to fill and here in the, in the color hex, copy and paste the shade, the 500 shade I was talking to you about, right? So for the teal one, it's 009688. So if we go back to Adobe XD, we come here, paste the hex, and there we have our primary color, primary. Uh, let me lower this font, it's kind of big. <laughs> Let's put it 48, there you go. So there you have your primary. You can follow along. You don't need to do the same colors I'm doing. I'm just doing the colors I picked for Gitrans, but feel free. Oh, I see someone new joined. Hey, Banana, thank you for joining. And we're doing really good. We are talking about colors and typography and redesigning uh, a mobile app, but just being, this, uh, just being developers. So no prior experience or research in design, just uh, using guidelines and figuring out and trying stuff out. So thank you for joining. If you want to download uh, Adobe XD, you can. And we have the, the project I'm working on on GitHub. Let me send you the link on uh, the chat so you can download it and play around with it as well. This is an open source project uh, we have been working on. It's called Git Trends and it allows you to see like uh, which of your repositories is trending in GitHub and you can like follow up on them and stuff. So here's the link. There it is. So you go to that link and there's a file called, there's a file called Git Trends, where is it? Let me put it here. So this file called Git Trends.xd, you download it and you can open the project and play around with us. So going back here to the colors, um, we now have our primary color, right guys? So now we need the primary dark color for this because remember, in our mobile app, we have the main bar, right? The main navigation bar, and we also have the status bar on the top. Uh, I'm looking for something, give me a second. Where is it? Yeah, I want to show you the bar. So, okay, let me show you here. Yeah. So remember, in each screen in your app, you're gonna have a bar on the top, probably, 
or on the bottom like maybe you have tabs on the bottom or maybe you have a menu so the primary you're going to use on those components so the nav bar the menus or the bottom bars uh, in the dark primary you're going to use for the status bar or for something let's say you have a surface uh, that has like two levels let's say you have like a card with uh, maybe two components inside you can maybe put the primary dark on the on the lower surface and put the primary on on the on the other two and that gives a feeling like a, of depth so you can also play around with that so uh, let's create another box a cool trick to like create a new rectangle you don't need to go to the rectangle tool create a new one because i actually want the next one i'm gonna make to be the same size right and exactly like this let me put it a little bit more around uh, wait let me just put it here 176 times 176 there you go so if you press your alt key on on your keyboard hold it down and click on any any component in the project that is a shortcut and it's actually going to copy it's going to duplicate the thing you just clicked so the component you just clicked and you can just move it around and give it a position and there you have a, a new rectangle with the same characteristics as the same one you have right so now we just need to change the color and give it the primary dark color we want so for primary dark material design recommends to use the see here you don't need to learn this by memory I always go to the documentation and refresh on the shades they recommend so for primary dark they recommend 700 um, so we go to our teal color get the 700 copy it uh, come over here change the fill of this box let me copy this text let's change primary dark center there you go there we have our primary dark color if you see that it's uh you would like it to be a little bit more darker just go to the same palette and remember you have all the shades to play around so the 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 shade uh, they propose is 700. This is like, like the border, right? If you put 600, it's gonna look almost as the same as your primary color, right? So after 700, you can pick any of these three, of these three colors, and they could be your primary, uh, your primary dark color. So in Gitran's uh, case, I wanted it to be really dark. So I went with the 900, I believe. Let's see if it looks, yeah, if you see, it looks uh, exactly the same. So I went with 500 here and 900 over here. And that's how I got like that cool contrast there, right? So after that, uh, we have to select an accent color let me copy my box again copy my text accent accent wait I want to center this in reference to this one uh, okay there you go so for our accent color it's really good that they're they have a lot of contrast uh, between them i like to pick colors that are not similar but you can definitely like pick a teal and a and a like blue but i like to go like really different between the two colors so i pick teal and orange amber i think it was let me see yeah it was the amber color and for the accent color, they recommend us to use 
the 200 shade. So it's, it really pops out. You see how light it is? Like in comparison to their 500 uh, version. So if I wanted to do primary and, and primary dark, I will do the same thing I did with the teal, but just using the amber. And you see how the, the tone of the colors are like really similar uh, to the teals we had. So for accent, always use well, you even see the separ the the divide the the separation here. So all the shades here, you can use that as accent color. All these four, I like to go with two hundred as they recommend. Or sometimes when I don't want it to be so light, I go with one of these two, like four hundred or seven hundred. So for good trends, I think I did two hundred. Let's see. I definitely did not do 200 because you see it's a little bit more more darker right so <laughs> let's see let's see if it was amber or yeah it was amber but it was definitely not 200 maybe 400 or 700 let's see ba, ba, ba. Five hundred as well. Let's see. Hmm. Okay, I know what happened. So, okay, perfect, perfect segue to the next topic. So, okay, we can let's say we pick two hundred here, right? And that will be your accent color. So now you can use those three colors, and you basically have all the colors you need for your app if you you can keep it simple and just use those three colors and how you use them is basically this these two are for surfaces and these uh this one is for uh your your buttons and ui components and even your icons you can put in this same colors um so why is git trends palette a bit different and have like extra colors so after you have these three main colors remember these colors are only for our components but you also have something else in your app you have text right and you have icons and you have yeah you have icons and they they could be either on a dark background or a white background right a light background so depending on that, you you also can pick uh, decide which color uh, your icon should have depending on where they're standing. So when you're defining your style, you can uh, you can define all of that uh, before implementing the UI, and everything will uh, go smoothly. So that's why here you see I have this other color here, and it's called text primary. So basically. If we go to the blog, I gave you a few things, a few categories for which you should generally pick colors, right? And in the blog, I also, one of the tips, if we go to the list, I already talked about the first one. Pick at least two colors for your palette, your primary and your, your primary, primary dark, right? In this case, they're the same color, just with different shades. Pick at least one accent color, which is our orange. Ensure your colors have enough contrast. Remember, if they don't have enough contrast, uh, people that can't see uh, colors are gonna have a hard time using your UI. Um, use different shades of the same color. We're already doing that. And everything should have its color defining our palette so give everything that is gonna be in your screen define your color don't leave anything to guess because that's only gonna slow down your your implementation process of the UI and also er, something is always gonna feel off on the design where you're 
uh, coding it in the in the app, right? Because there's at least one color you just said, ah, let me just put this, and you didn't consider it in in regards to the other colors you're using. So I put I put seven categories here. That with that, I feel confident that once I have colors for each of those. I can implement any UI I want in my app and I'll have no problems. I know what color I should use and everything. So the first one is primary text. The primary text, as I told you, is headers, subtitles, and prominent text, right? And we also should have what is the colors we, we want to use in our bars, app bars. What is the background color we're going to have for, for our app? Remember, each page has a background. See behind the cards? This background here, what color should it be? Some UIs define the background as the primary color, but a lighter shade of it. So another recommendation they do, what shade should that background be? So it doesn't clash with everything else I put. So for that background, they commonly use 100 or 50. So you see they're really light. If I do, for example, let's, let's show you that. I want to do... There you go. And there you see, like it, it doesn't look bad. It's also a different feel you can give to your UI, but in my case, I didn't. I didn't want to have the oh, everything till. I wanted to have that contrast between the the bar and the white background. I wanted it to look like, yeah, really, uh, really light. So that's why I decided. Okay, instead of having a really uh, light shade of teal, I'll just go with white. And here we go back. Let's go. There you go. And there you can see the difference. I think the first uh, design, yeah, the first version of, of Git Trends, you see, they uh, random did that technique. So for the bar, he had 500, and for here, he had a lighter blue team. I mean, blue color. Let's see what else we need. Card surfaces. If you're going to have cards or different surfaces in your, in your page, what should the, the background of those surfaces be? Uh, for my buttons and my action items, what color am I going to use? So this is commonly the accent color you use. And for icons, what color should they be? If you notice here, the icons, um, I have either black color for it or white color. Because I use, I'm using a, a lot of, well, yeah. And you can also sometimes break the rule and give each icon a color if you want to highlight that stat, right? So that's why uh, you notice that I had like optional accent colors in my palette because of this case. Here we wanted to have each stat have like their own style and characteristic. So there you can say, okay, let me get a few more accents color and give uh, a stat that color to all my whole app. So for fourths, I use the same teal color. So anywhere we reference ports and we put a, uh, the stat, we're gonna use this teal color for that. If we're talking about favorites, we're gonna use this uh, yellow accent color for favorites. If we're talking about issues, we're gonna use this, this is like a kind of reddish uh, accent color. Uh, so we're using that color for that. Uh, we also using like a purple color here you can see all the all the suggestions I did initially for those uh, accent colors, right? If you notice at the right side, we also have something which is like the same palette, but they have like, if you see, they look like less saturated than this side. And that's because of the dark theme, but that's gonna be a whole session we're gonna have just about dark theme and how our colors in our UI is going to change because uh, of how we want to adapt the, the, uh, to, dark, to dark theme, right? 
So that's uh, uh -huh. yeah, exactly. So yeah, as you said, I would recommend first working with the light theme. So after I created the light theme and everything and I have my colors set and I, I was happy with them, I created my palette. Then I started thinking about the dark theme and that's why I wanted to have it in a different session because if you try to work on both palettes at the same time, it will make the decision process of picking the colors uh, way harder because you're going to be like, ah, oh, but I need to change the saturation for this and I don't really like it. But once you see the, the light theme implemented and you say, okay, I saturate, I unsaturated the colors, they, they might not look good here, but once I put it on my design, they actually look uh, in sync. See, they look like they make sense and everything looks uh, balanced. So yeah, leave the dark theme decisions for later. First define your palette and then you work with that. So uh, yeah, but it's important to have them also defined. So once we have all our categories and we assign colors to them, keep this simple. Don't think like, cause you have different categories, everything has to have a different color. No, you can reuse colors. Remember you have these four main colors I mean, these three main colors to use. So I use accent for buttons and action items. App bars, uh, I use primary. Status bar, I use primary dark. Primary text, keep it simple, either black or white. No, that's general text. General text, either black or white, depending on the background you have uh, for, the, uh, for that text, right? If it's a light background, use dark text. If it's a dark background, use white text because even your text color has to have high contrast between its background, right? Because if not, it's gonna be hard for the user to read. Uh, in primary text, you can also go default, go to black or white or if you want to also give it a much a branded feel to the UI, you can pick a different uh, color just for the primary text. So in my in our case, in the Git Trends app, we pick this uh, brown brownish color, you see? And, and it goes really well with the other three colors, so I really liked it. And if you notice in the, in the UI here, here, like if you look at it from far, it might look like a like it's black, right? Or gray. But once you get close to it, you it's subtle, but you notice it's actually not black and it, it goes really good with the steel. So it's like it's it's uh, it's attracted to the user. And it's not common. So it, it gives it like a unique feel. So for our cards and our repository list, we're using that primary color. This is not black, this is only primary color. For our stats, we are using black. So we decided the icons are gonna have the stat color and the stats are gonna only have black. We initially said, oh, maybe let's give even the stats uh, the same color as the icon, but then it, it looked like too saturated, like it, it look, uh, you, you didn't distinguish well between the icon and the text. Let me show you. Mm, where is my, oh, here it is. So the fill for the color. So this is how we had it initially. So yeah, you can double click on the text, press this little uh, picker, color picker you uh, press in any component that has a color and it's gonna give that color to what you had selected. So that's how we had it initially. And if you notice, uh, it, it gets, uh, like it's hard to read because my background is white. These colors, since they're accent, they're really light. So the it's hard to read it, right? 
it's okay to have it for an icon because it's the icon is small it doesn't occupy a lot of a lot of space and it's not like text uh, so for the text keep it simple either go black white or a custom color just for that that is kind of dark as well uh, let me control C control C now if we zoom out you see that at a glance I can know what that number is so that's important as well so once we have that defined okay what tools can we use to find good colors because it, this sounds perfect but <laughs> this was something that also was like a um, something that gave me like anxiety when I was trying to pick the color like oh my god there's so many colors here what is the combination that is going to be like perfect for me don't worry you don't have to go <laughs> uh, nuts and go like five hours creating palettes and everything there's great sites where a lot of designers and users have uploaded their their ideas for color palettes and here i give you some of them so the first one is color simple it's a great site uh it, are, it revolves around everything that has to do with color so one of the sections they have is called color palettes and here you can ha you can find a bunch like a full collection of different palettes users have, have created um for example look at this one you you have even four colors right away so you can say like oh uh let me zoom in so right away uh since we already know the concept of like primary primary dark i can say okay i like this this palette and i already right away know this will be probably my primary this is gonna be the primary dark and this could be my accent color or this could be two accent colors i could be i could use in my app right so yeah you can use this site uh grab one of those palettes and start playing around with your ui so remember what i told you uh, the cool feature in adobe xd uh, that if you're creating your components and if you go to the left side here remember if i'm going too fast tag to me in the chat can you repeat this clarify anything don't be don't be shy to ask questions we are here just to learn and, and play around with this uh, so no worries so remember when we were playing around at the beginning of the session with this vector here and i was like hey you know how in summary you can define a style and set uh, a color to one of these uh, items right one of these objects and define it here so on the left side if you see these three icons here and you press the first one the first one is called assets and in your adobe xd project you can have different assets uh, and those include color uh, fonts font size uh, like yeah font families and font sizes your custom component that you have created you can uh, remember i defined them uh, up here so adobe xd actually you can select all of this uh, comp all of these objects you put together and grouped you can right click them and since this is already a component it doesn't give me the option here but it's going to show you an option here that says create component and, and once you select that it's going to add it to your assets here so that gives you the power to re reuse that component throughout your project with just clicking it here so let's say i want to grab a card item component that i created i drag and drop from here and it creates my component oh uh, wait and it creates my component automatically there and yeah there you can see it so that's a really cool feature this asset uh, library you have here and how you can keep all your stuff organized and if you if you look at it closely right away you can correlate it to your summary project right this is literally your style uh, your styles from the app so 
you have components uh, in your styles. You define the, the styles for your custom component. Let's say a GitHub button, right? And you say, okay, my GitHub button is like this. It's gonna have a background color of this, uh, this color, right? It's gonna have an icon. That icon is gonna have this color. And yeah, you can use that to uh, help you uh, implement this in your, in your project as well. So I was talking about this asset because I can, and in those assets, uh, just as in summary form, uh, you can define styles for your colors, right? So here I have all the colors for, I already declared all the colors for my palette, right? So I have my primary colors, my primary dark, I have my accent colors here, my text color here. Uh, I have my graph palette as well. So if I remember correctly, I already assigned all the components, their color from this asset uh, list. So now if we pick any of these palettes, we can easily create a new team for the app. Uh, let's say tomorrow Brandon says, hey, I really like the palette we have, but I would like to give users the option to have different different teams, right? Uh, let's say, let's get a, a team that is like a, like a vintage look. Uh, let's see. Let me show you another one of the, of the sites. Let's say we want a vintage palette, right? This other site is the color.adult.com site. It's also really good to, to find palettes and work around with color. So uh, something I like about this one is that you can explore, right? You can find, da, 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 da. they have a section that is called explore or da, da, da. wait, trying to remember. They have a section where you can like find palettes and you can like give them like a team so in this case, I want to find colors uh, that are vintage. And if we put that here, it's gonna show you a bunch of palettes that go along with that team. You'll see. See, I write vintage here and look at all the color palettes and images they also provide you that go along with that team. So you can start getting inspiration and ideas of stuff you can add to your app and colors you can use to get that vintage feel inside of it. So let's say I want to use this palette, right? Uh, this, the, all the sites are really good because you can, as soon as you click any of the colors, it will copy the hex uh, to your to your clipboard or you could also download uh, the palette in an XML, a SAS, a CSS, as a JPEG. So it gives you a lot of uh, options to export them. So, okay, let's say, ba -ba -ba -bam. let's say we're gonna use this, right? And let me copy, no, let's use, okay. So, hmm, which one should be our primary? Which one do you guys want? the yellow or this orange here or maybe you want to go with the blue in this one remember we need a primary and a primary dark let's see who selects one first <laughs> let's try and make it night i i'm not leaning toward this one because we already yeah we already have the teal one and it's kind of similar so okay let's say our primary is gonna be yellow right nice okay Ricardo says, let's pick yellow for primary. So let's bring our boxes we created previously. Move them over here. Uh, what am I doing? Okay. Move them over here. Our primary is going to be that yellow color. And so our primary dark, uh, I will... I will recommend just going and finding this in the material site. They have like a color picker, color generator here. Uh, so they have this cool tool, which is called color palettes, right? You can put your hex color here. 
uh, wait. You can put your hex color here and it's gonna actually generate all the shades for that color dynamically. Because let's say I want a color that it's not in the in those colors material design has in that palette, right? I want a custom one that I found in some other site. But I also want all the different recommended shades they provide, right? So I can simply put the color here and he's gonna tell you in which shade that color is so we picked a primary that is 700 it's recommended to have us 500 but since this color is so bright we notice excuse me we notice that the 500 is actually too bright so 700 is good but we want a primary dark so we pick as well the 900 version of this color and we go here our primary dark and I think they, in the palette, they had an orange of that tone as well. So that palette is really accurate as well. Let's see. Let's see. Adobe. Yeah, you see, it's kind of the same tone of, of orange. It's a bit more darker. But yeah, let's use the one in the palette. There you go. Yeah, it looks really nice. See? It, really, it looks really nice uh, next to it. And da, 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 da. so let's use for our accent, let's use the this blue one. We go here. Beautiful. So now, since I already have defined my colors here, let me also show you how you can define it, just so so you know how it how it's done. You right click the component right and in the list of, of options they give you when you right click there's gonna be one that is called add color to assets if the if Adobe XD sees that the color this object has is not in his asset list he's gonna go and search his asset list and he's gonna try and find this hex value we have defined for the color if he doesn't find it He's gonna tell you, hey, do you want to add this color to your assets? You press here and it adds the color in the assets here at the top of the list. And it, the name it's gonna give it is the hex value of that color. But if I want a more friendlier name, you can right click it, rename it and say vintage accent color, right? And that's perfect. Now, you can just pick another component let's say this card and how can I assign the color to some object I have right already create a component I selected the background of this card if you see the fill it has that dark color I have there so I just select this and then I select the color from the left side and it's gonna assign that color to this. So now this component is tied to the color I have defined in this vintage asset color asset, right? If you want to edit that color and change it, you right click it, press edit. Once you press edit, you're gonna get this color picker here. You can put another hex value here or just use the, the bars to change it. And there you can see how all the objects that are using that color are changing as well. It's just as if we, if we were dealing with our app, since it has a reference to the color, if I change that color, everybody that's referenced here is gonna change. So that also helps you a lot when you're working with XD to not have to like define the color in all the objects at the same time. You can just have them organized here. So, okay. Uh, let me delete this one because I want to use these colors in the primary I already have defined here. So we see how all our our UI is going to change with this new team we have defined. So I'm going to search for my light primary teal here. I'm going to edit it, but first I'm going to copy the hex color of my primary of my new primary, which is the yellow one. 
edit paste the hex there you can see how it changed right away um, let's change our primary dart now let's copy this hex so I'll go to the one that's called light primary dart press edit there it is and now let's change our accent let's see where is the accent light accent yellow I believe this is the one edit and now that's blue let's see <laughs> and there you can see you can also find right away which objects I did not define with the color so in this UI I did use the the color I defined here but I think in this circum proposal I used it in some things see remember the star used to be yellow and this used to be like a, a the the teal color now it all changed um, so we could probably use let me see let's use one that is yeah like even this components here that had like the yellow and the teal changed to the new accent colors but it did not come out perfectly because i i did not like assign each individual like i was not using this at first because remember i learned while i was doing the project so some of them were not assigned because i learned this like halfway through while i was doing it so this one is probably a good one so we can see the difference no let's use this one as you can see the primary colors here this is the primary dart i actually like how they look they have good contrast between them this one has a a good dark tone but right away you can notice uh why is it important to define all the colors of your palette right so yeah here who can tell me what's the issue in this top bar if you see this this ui what is not quite right let's see who can answer <laughs> see see what the people in the chat say <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah they have they <laughs> oh yeah I, I see ricardo oh i see brian as well yeah correct that's the that's the problem the color of our text uh is too is too light now because before it used to be good because our color for primary was a darker color right it was not as light but now since our primary is a lighter color remember when i told you guys keep text simple either go white or go or go black right so in this case as soon as you notice this and you know this color is kind of light just default the icons and the text to black and it should look perfect now let's see if that works let's come here and and as soon as we change that now it looks beautiful see see how well the black uh, works with this and this color as well so yeah uh, that's a good way of playing around with your colors just define your layout put the colors to them and once you have your palette uh, defined here and all of that you can create a ton of uh, different uh, yeah different UIs like different teams for your for your UI like you can see even here how the the teal color change for our onboarding and even here 
the vectors for the empty states also try to use the same colors you're using for your palette so the vectors feel like part of the team right so that's why you see like they change as well with this yeah yeah so that's in regards to colors let me go back here so we recover our old colors and there you see how it goes back and if we zoom in okay wait if we zoom in now we have the white text again but it doesn't feel like it's uh, noisy right it feels great because this as i told you is a darker color so yeah uh these sites are really good for you to find out any palette you like and that's the first thing i did after i decided i wanted teal i came to this site and i started to look for palettes that had teal teal in them and eventually i found one uh, let me see i think i have the bookmark here i recommend you guys also to all these tools i'm giving you put them on, under a bookmark so i have a, a folder here that it's called utils and i have one that is called color theory and inside of that i have all those sites i just shared with you guys and when i need something about color i just go there so the color for the palette for git trends i actually found in a separate site i just put in google the first time i was looking i was like oh color palettes <laughs> and a bunch of articles came out so in this article specifically i found the palette for git trends and it's this one if you notice uh wait is this is it this one let me see let's see i think it's that one but i just like uh, did a slight variation to it with the shades of the color yeah that's the one so i really liked uh this one you see it had the teal here and i liked how it looked with this uh orange so and this um this brown color as well and that's why you see that we have the brown color here but i use this palette like remember you're gonna get the palette then you're gonna go to the material site tool right to get your shades correctly and once i got my shades that's how i eventually got my palette defined here and i knew which which hex values i was gonna use so once i define all my categories here you can see a bit more defined our our colors for the for the project right remember the categories i told you primary primary dark accent color and then i decided that i wanted to make my text look a little more branded and unique so i said okay that that brown color i really like i had no clue where i was gonna put it and then i said hey but i can put it on the text and now have them in combination with this right so I was like, okay, my primary text is going to be that, that brown color. Uh, but this brown color don't use for, like, color text you should not use. Uh, once you read the guidelines, you're going to see you should not use for big text because it, 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 it turns noisy to the user. So you can use color text, but only use them for headings and titles. So my main text, my main context is uh is the uh black then i have four more optional accent colors i i just start uh, playing around because i had all those stats that i wanted to be unique right and then i said okay my car surfaces are gonna be uh white my background is gonna be white and that's basically it that's your palette for your light team so once you have your palette for your light team, then we're eventually gonna talk about our dark team and it's and your dark team is gonna be basically the same palette, but you have to do some adjustment to the color. So when the user looks at it with no light around, those colors don't hurt their eyes and uh, are uh, suiting to look at, right? And 
So after I had the main palette defined, we also wanted to have, uh, so initially I said, because if you don't, you don't need to have a, a separate palette for your graphs, for your charts, you can use your primary color and, or, and no, you can use your accent colors for the graph. Because remember, the accent colors are, are for actionable items and to highlight important stuff in your UI. So the accent color, do not use in text, do not use in bars. Only if you actually want to break uh, the rule and be like, yeah, I'm going to use it there, but I know it's not going to bother my, my, my user. If you use it in, in spots that have a lot of, like, a lot of area, that color is so so light that it's eventually it's gonna annoy the user, right? So here in the chart, I could have just used my accent color and my primary, but we wanted the chart to like uh, pop out and be its own thing, right? Have its own like feel. So we decided to to search for a new palette just for the chart. So I came here again. I was like, okay, what colors could I use for my chart? And I eventually found these four colors I have here. And that's what you see here in the chart. So find a palette for your chart, but find it also that kind of looks good with the colors you have. Don't go all scientific on that. Just by a glance, compare them and be like, okay, yeah, this one looks good. <laughs> Nobody is gonna, is gonna judge you, don't worry. <laughs> Oh, at least no one has judged me so far. <laughs> so that's on regards to color. Oh my God, it's 7.50 already. Uh, let's see, let's see what else we have. We also have to talk a bit about typography. We can start talking about typography in this session and complete uh, the, typo the typography topic on the, on the start of the next one. Since we are just experimenting and playing around, and remember, this is five weeks. Uh, if it's fine by you guys, I would like to continue talking a little bit more of the tools I have here for color. And then we can like have a little introduction into typography and then continue in the next one. What do you guys think? Let me, let me know in the chat. Uh, Randy, what is your idea as well on that? Do you think that that, that would be good? Yeah. Yeah. True. <laughs> okay. So let me show you a little bit more things uh, Color Sinspo has for you that are really neat. Um, so besides the color palettes, you also have a, a section where you can deal with gradients. And they have like a ton of gradients uh, that people and designers have uploaded. And you literally just can browse through them and create, uh, get inspiration to create designs with them. So when I'm creating my, you, you see my blog post, uh, I always create like a banner uh, for them. The first thing I look before I start doing the banner is for that gradient background. Because I, I don't know, I have something with gradients and I just love them. <laughs> so I first look for my gradient. And once I decide on the gradient, let's say I, I pick this one. Uh, I pick this one. I go to my Adobe XD or Illustrator. And if you see, these gradients have uh, different angles as well. So it's really good. You can like find uh, radial gradients, uh, linear gradient, gradients, and get ideas with that. So I go to Illustrator, or it could be Adobe XD. Uh, I just uh, use Illustrator because I prefer, but it's not mandatory. So I come here, I create a, a rectangle on the back. Okay, I have a block somewhere. Give me a second. <clears throat> oh, there it is. So I create a rectangle on the back. Uh, I open here the color. Uh, well, there's a tool which is for creating the gradient. 
and based on the gradient I know which is going to be the color to start and they have this section in this page for gradients but if you see it doesn't give me much uh, much description on them uh, but I found a really cool site for gradients which is called UI gradients and this one is perfect basically when you come to the site as soon as you go in the first thing they show you is like uh, a random gradient and most of the time the rain the random gradient they show me is the one I use because they're it's always different but if you want a gradient that it's like uh, a certain a color like let's say a green gradient that has like a gradient that has green in it you can uh, filter them by color and here you can see a ton of options on gradients right and after you select one it tells you let me zoom in it tells you the start color here the end color and by looking at the gradient you also know if it's like horizontal and from where does it start and from where does it end they're also gradients that you're gonna look at them and they're like di diagonal so the gradient tool allows you to do that so let's say I selected this one wait this one is similar to the one we had and this is really good because remember summary forms um, just added the the paths uh, to the to summary forms so you can create gradients and all of this out of the box now with summary forms but if you are if you're not in the latest version you can also use one of the plugins uh, from our community friends like uh, Steven he has his pancake views and in the pancake views you can define the gradient so it's just finding the right inspiration for it and playing around with it so let's do this one this one looks beautiful so you take the first color you set it here in the gradient tool you take the ending color you put it here as well and let's see yeah I think in the middle they have like another color let me see oh no yeah there it is yeah so there's your gradient and so once I pick the gradient I start adding the components on top of them so when I get this vector I will probably you see it's yellow right now I will probably pick a color that goes with these two colors and based on the gradient I also know if the text will be white or black so when you're working also with your UI do the same thing if you're gonna do a gradient go to the site and get on it, uh, a gradient you like and once you get that, that background you start adding st uh, stuff on top and modifying the color of the text you're adding to play well with the background you have right it's, it's way harder in my opinion to have all the content and then try and force a background on it because then yeah it, it kind of breaks it kind of breaks for you right there's another cool yeah Um, I believe uh, this allows you to export. Let me see. Uh, ba -ba -ba. Yeah, I think there's like an option in Adobe XD to export them. Uh, let's see. Da -da -da. File, export. Oh, I know where. Uh, there's a share option here if you do where is it share your design and prototype with developers mm -hmm. downloadable assets anyone with the link let's put android here and i think when you open this link it gives you like the palette of the ui 
and then it, it gives you the op the option to export just those colors like in a in a SAML file in an XML file oh I see Brian says select an item and export okay uh, let's try that as well okay the link is created it says 100% okay there it is <laughs> let's copy it oh, he wants me to open it mm -hmm. I believe yeah see colors hex and let's see uh -huh. let me see wait oh it allows me to copy it immediately but there should be an option to export as well let me see let's try what brian said about selecting the the view and exporting so he said we can select all of this mark for export export selected what is export gonna do let's see hmm. Hmm. no I think this is gonna export the the whole Oh, maybe if we take it as SVG, let's see. Let's see what does what that does. But I know there's an option to do it. I just I don't have it fresh on my mind. But I, I'll next next session I'll I'll see if they have something for that. Oh really? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that would be so awesome. Cause all of this assets, remember we said this is basically like the style file for our project. If we can just export that, yeah, we will have like half of the trouble done. <laughs> yeah <laughs> uh, yeah but we can definitely look into that <laughs> um, so the last tool I wanted to show you regarding color uh, oh it's eight already okay let's take five minutes to finish with the tools and then we say we wrap up and we continue next next session so something else this site also has is good tutorials in terms of color if you remember with the basis I gave you you are set so you don't need to like go further into it if you don't want to but color is like a whole topic like you could literally spend like a year two years researching just about color and learning how to use color so this site also has yeah <laughs> yeah and i didn't even go like into the theory of it like you see there's like uh like you know primary secondary colors like how they combine with each other how can you create palettes on your own and everything so yeah it's a whole world but this site also has good tutorials you can watch i believe they're free yeah you see they have videos and you can learn about like the color triangle and everything but we are developers, we don't have that much time to research color. If you have time in your free time, go ahead. <laughs> but yeah, do you also have that there? Uh, they also have a section for inspiration. They show like cool arts that combine color in different ways. And you can like take ideas from that. And maybe by seeing this image, maybe you can say, oh, I could create my UI with these three colors he used here. So that's another uh, neat thing 
uh, let's see what else there's a this I call colors no I put the same my bad I need to fix that link but this this is the other side and this side has this also has a lot of uh, let's see palettes trends like palettes are trending right now uh, and it's based on uh, uh, bolts from designers and stuff. It's like a, they rank it by bolts and ha by how many people are using these palettes, how many people have copied them. So you can also be like, oh, like you see, there's look at all these different palettes uh, they have. And they tells you how many people have saved them. So you can be like, oh, a lot of people like this. So let me try and use this one. And the last one is the some other tools Adobe has, really cool. Remember I told you, um, this side was, was where you can like hit explore, you write vintage and they're gonna show you like a lot of uh, suggestions and color palettes and like images regarding that topic. But they also have this four, these four cool tools. Um, so once you research a little bit more about color you're gonna learn that there's uh like different harmonies to colors and that's when you start hearing the words like monochromatic uh complementary colors uh compound colors and all of that like analogous so you can literally choose one of those harmony rules and create a palette with this wheel just by dragging it and it's gonna create like all all the all the colors for you you just pick the main color you want in your palette let's say red and it's gonna create the whole palette for you and it's gonna give you the hex and you can like even modify the rgb R, rgba here as well oh this one allows you to export i think let me see uh pa, pa, pa. yeah you can export it to your adobe xd assets and it, it's gonna be added here automatically as one of your assets because this page is from Adobe as well so yeah here you can see triad and once you research and like what it's all of that you can use this site to help you do each of those this is another really cool tool if you have an image and you want to like uh, extract all the colors from that image and create a color pa uh, color palette you can literally upload the file here and it's going to create the color palette based of that image so let's do that let's find an image um, let's just uh, ba -ba -ba -ba. no maybe Hmm, where is it? Ah, okay. I can go to Explore. Let's put Vintage again and take one of those images and see if it generates the, the palette. Let's see. Yeah, you see, for example, let's see. Let's give him a hard image. Maybe this one that has like all the colors together. Okay, if my computer allows me to copy it here. <laughs> Download as JPEG. Because remember, it's gonna give you the images and as well as gonna give you the, the palette here. But let's assume this image I have uh, wait, I just downloaded the, pa the palette. Uh, mm -hmm. I have to get it from here. Because that side, when you press it, it downloads the, the palette instead of the, the image. Da, 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 da. See like that loads. Go here, go here. Okay.
Okay, let's say I have this image, right? Oh no. Okay. This one. I want to take all the colors from this image and create a palette. So let's download the image. Save as. Mm, yeah, that one is free. Man. Let's put it free. So this is another good uh, page where you can get image assets uh, for free. Really high quality and vectors as well. And this uh, we're going to see in the section where we're going to be working with iconography and and adding assets to our to our to our project. Oh, okay, we can use this one. They're free. They also have paid images, but their free ones have really good quality, so you don't need to pay. But you know that everything free, you should give attribution to the to the designers that created it. Be grateful people. <laughs> Uh, you just need to add them like in your credits or, or anything and yeah you can use them let's see here so we drag and drop that image and let's see what wow he even downloads right away the the palette so let's open the image what? ah okay my bad I uploaded the I uploaded the color palette I downloaded from Adobe. This is the image we're gonna upload. This one. Okay, let me refresh this. Now we take our image, we drag and drop, and you see how immediately it shows you from where did it pick the colors and how it created the color palette here i don't know you guys but i actually would use this color this color palette in an app like it it looks, it looks really good and i think it even allows you to move around yeah look you can even move around one of the color is selected and change that color for something else so yeah this tool is Adobe is really great at, at tools for designing. Oh, look, it also has a tool for generating gradients. <laughs> like, yeah, it's, it's insane, see? Look how you can create the gradient. Wow. So yeah, I hope, uh, let me see if I have anything else to show you, gradients, and yeah. So we're going to leave typography for uh, this, the, the start of the next session. Um, I hope, let me see if I have any other things to show you. Do, 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 do. Nope. So that was all the tools I have for color. I believe I have a few other tools that are related to color, but have to do more with like iconography and stuff like that. So that's why I didn't put them here. But we have a lot of other cool resources we're going to be using in the next sessions. Uh, thank you, as always, for uh, sticking around with us, coming, for, coming to our series and just staying active and participating. Um, I hope to see, all, to see you guys all next week. And um, Randy, if you have anything to add, uh, any announcements, we have uh, events coming up. Oh yeah, we have the what is the name of the of his talk? Let me, let me find it. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Yep. Mm -hmm. So here I'm sh I'm I'm sharing the 
the upcoming event. We're gonna have it uh, Wednesday, September 9th. It's gonna be a really interesting event, as Randy said. We're gonna have our one of our uh, most loved community members, Andres Pineda. He's gonna be talking about reactive programming. So if you want to sign up on the event, uh, just go to our meetup page, uh, meetup slash dot net dot net dom. Let me copy and paste the link in the chat for you guys. Uh, let's see. Yep. Oh yeah, that reminds me. Today we have been say thank you to all our new followers. So let me go to Twitch and see our new followers. So we have Albert, Albert Raza, Uris, Omar Astro RB. I don't know how to say that nickname. <laughs> and Nick Con 12. So thank you really much. Uh, thank you everyone for joining us. Thank you for, for the follows and we hope to see you next week and uh, have a nice rest of your weekend. If you are here in the States, have a nice rest of your long weekend. We know on, on Monday is Labor Day. <laughs> so yeah, uh, goodbye.